thanking the organizers for bringing us here. It's particularly nice because it was a slightly different cross section of people, which I think always leads to interesting conversations. So the main goal of my talk is to introduce, well, my first draft of the notes said A, but let's say another uh, construction of, the, of topical vector bundles. <laughs> And I'm afraid that, unlike what Dimitri said, I cannot promise to be more grown up or, and I'll disappoint Chris by not being more cynical. cynical <laughs> I think but it's going to be a different perspective. And I'll try and say a little bit about how, as I go through about how I think these things fit into in one world. So I'm going to focus in particular on what I'll say, maybe embedded, and tropical varieties and also from the perspective of tropical scheme theory. So I'll say what, what I mean by this as we're going through. Okay, so I don't, so I guess I'm, even as the last speaker in a, what is apparently tropical day, I can't assume that we all know <laughs> what tropical, like, yeah, exactly, beautiful tropical day. Well done, Frank Gret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can't assume that you all know some tropical geometry, so let me tell you at least the way I'm thinking about it, particularly to focus on this embedded. So if you if you if you're very much not a tropical person, I think the philosophy for here is to think that I want to embed. I have a variety Y I care about, and I'm going to embed it into some toric variety in such a way that. The geometry of the toric variety is going to tell me something about the geometry of X. So, in particular, maybe we could say to get, it gets distinguished divisors or divisor classes, depending on say so divisors, maybe classes. So we saw this a little bit in Patrick's talk, where he was. In some, you could say he was choosing his compact, his particular subdivisions of blowups to get distinguished things, and the idea is that then these should have some control over the geometry of y. Okay, so that's where we're coming from. Um, so my notation, for me, the tropical semi-ring is it's the same as we saw in Dimitri's talk. So I'll, but I will write r bar because for me, t is always a torus. So we have two operations, tropical plus is min, and tropical time is, is addition. This yeah, we have this is almost a ring for anybody who hasn't seen it, except that addition is only a semi-group, not a paper. So no, no it additive inverses. So if we have this notation, we have things like I'm going to just to know where we're coming from, we have we're going to have trop of k star is r to the n, and I'll say what I mean by trop in one moment. And trop of k a, to the n, right? That's Sorry? They start to the end, right? They start to the end, yes. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> and trop of AN is will be R bar to the end. So you should think that R bar is playing the role of my field K. And infinity is playing the role of zero, so that's why K star turns into R. Okay. And now the coordinate ring of AN. Is going to be just polynomials, but this well, the semi ring of tropical polynomials. So you write down polynomials with coefficients of the tropical semi ring. Every operation is tropical. And, and in particular, I want to think about them as polynomials. Sometimes you'll have the same polynomials that give you this two different polynomials that give you the same function, but I want to regard them as different polynomials. Okay. So if I start with a valued field K, E, so, and I'll assume, just for convenience, I'll assume K equals K bar, just to make the exposition easier. Uh, we can have, and, and a, a sub-variety Y in K starting the N, prop Y is just going to be 
the valuation, well, the closure in the usual Euclidean topology of the valuation applied to Y. And by that, I mean the set of val Y1 up to val Yn, where Y being Y1 up to Yn is in Y. And then the point is that this is going to be, this is some set, so I take every point in Y, I take its valuation, I take its, so maybe we should say that, and we'll assume the valuation is non-trivial, I take its valuation, I get a bunch of points in R to the N, and I grab R to the N, and I take their closure, in the, in the usual Euclidean topology. And then the point is going to be that this is the support of a polyhedral complex With extra combinatorial structure. We won't need the extra combinatorial structure today, so I'm going to admit it. So, the sort of thing you might see is something like, oops, I've drawn that too close. What's going on there? We get something like this. So, you need a polyhedra. Okay. And then this generalizes to Y in, in a toric variety. So you can see I said what happens if you have Y a sub variety of a torus, just apply the, the valuation map coordinate wise. Well, toric variety, one way of thinking about this is toric varieties are unions of tori. And we could do this, apply this on each torus. Or you can think, for example, if I started with affine space, I could apply valuation coordinate wise and you still get it. maybe now we're going to get some infinities going on okay so why or maybe I should have any questions or please do interrupt if we're going through okay so why would I want to do this or do I highlight a few reasons Okay, so the first is to recover information about why. Okay, so in this case, the picture I've drawn is the tropical people in the audience know is the tropicalization of an elliptic curve. And it's an elliptic curve embedded as a cubic in the plane. And we can recover from this picture first that it's a curve because the, the picture has dimension one. Second, that it's a degree three, a curve of degree three in the plane because we have three things going in each of the coordinate directions. And then we can also get more information about the J invariant, valuation of the J invariant from the length of this loop. So that's the type of information we might recover. Now I should emphasize here that this is very dependent on my choice of embedding. So if I had chosen to embed my curve less carefully, I would just get some picture like this, and I, all I would find out, maybe I we can keep some extra information to remember the three, the degree three, but we'd otherwise only remember that. So you can think, in some sense, tropical geometry comes, there's the art part of it, is choosing the correct embedding of Y in order to illuminate the information you want, or extract the information you want. Okay. The second bit is, I, I would say it illuminates which ge geometric properties are combinatorial. And I'll say more about that as we come when we start to talk about vector bundles. And then the third one is, I would say, one other advantage of a topical approach is it raises different geometric questions. So it gives a, it somehow gives you a different approach where where different questions become simpler or more natural. And so sometimes the the interplay between whatever your favorite approach is and the tropical approach can lead to, to new ideas. So as one example, Here's a problem I'm going to come back to, but so anyone who doesn't like tropical stuff or is a tropical expert and wants something else to think about for the next 10 minutes, 
So if I give you a vector bundle on Y, the question is, is there an embedding phi from Y into some toric variety with F being phi star of some phi tilde with, sorry, F tilde with F tilde, a toric vector bundle. And you're saying we can do this in 10 minutes? <laughs> I, I will be very happy if you do it in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, Martin, your time is for us now. <laughs> Okay, so this is an example, and any, we'll come back to why I care about this problem later, but it's an example. Okay, so what have I said so far, though, from the well, any questions or solutions? What have I said so far about tropical geometry? I've told you how to take a subvariety of a torus and tropicalize it. Maybe the next question will be what about, so if I talk about coordinate rings, So I'm going to give you a much more, in some sense, algebraic perspective. For me, a vector bundle is going to be a locally free sheaf, and I'm going to think about it by saying, you know, this coherent sheaf is the sheafification of what module? So that's going to be my approach to thinking about, about things today. So, so I need to tell you module over what? Well, if Y is a subvariety of a torus, then the answer, you know, the normal answer is I take the, the coordinate ring, I just take the ideal of Y, this is an affine variety, I take all polynomials vanishing on Y, and I quotient by it. Okay, so let's tropicalize this. So for, for F being the sum of Cu, X to the U in, in my Laurent polynomial ring, I'll set trop F to be the tropical polynomial. So that's, I just turn multiplication into addition, addition into, sorry, multiplication into tropical multiplication, in addition into tropical addition. And I take the valuation of coefficients. So this in usual arithmetic is the minimum of the valuation of CU plus, and this turns into X dot U, but I want to think about it as a, as a polynomial rather than a function. So I've just turned my polynomial into a tropical polynomial. And then I can take the tropicalization of the ideal of Y. So that will just be the ideal in the semi-ring of tropical polynomials generated by trop F for F in I. Okay, so we're most of the way there. We know what this object is already. So that's the semi-ring of tropical polynomials. We know what this object is. When you work with semi-rings, you do not quotient by ideals. This, if you go back to your first course in algebra, you think about why do we talk about ideals in the first place? It's because we want to think about talk about kernels of homomorphisms. So when you talk about semi-rings, you if you want to describe a homomorphism, you instead have to tell you what you're smashing together. And this is called a, a congruence. So what I'm going to do here is so my coordinate ring, I start with the semi ring of tropical polynomials. And now I'm going to take the tropicalization of the ideal of Y and take what called its bed confluence. So this is the Gen Syracuse bend confluence. So we won't need to know the details of it. So I'll just, I'll write it very quickly. The idea is for every polynomial here, you identify it with the polynomial with one term removed. That turns out to be the right thing in the tropical geometry. But the idea is just a congruence is telling you what to identify so that we can take the question. Okay, so this is my coordinate ring. I can also replace the tropicalization of, of IG. If I want, I could replace this by J in the tropical semi ring that doesn't isn't necessarily a tropicalization, 
But if it doesn't, it'd be better satisfy some matroidal conditions, which I'll admit at this point. Okay, so this is our notion of coordinate rings. I mean, so, so far, in some sense, we've done the first few weeks of a first course in algebraic geometry from a tropical perspective. <clears throat> and say that this, I can generalize this all to these is two to toric varieties. Starting with the easiest bits, it's not a big stretch to see. If I replace the Laurent polynomial ring by the usual polynomial ring, I can talk about things in affine space. And more generally, we've seen in a few talks, toric varieties have the advantage that they are essentially just generalizations. Of this. We can look at ideals in the construct. But if you're not a toric person, just follow along with the affine space and toric space. Okay, but let's talk a little bit of actually, if we well, as soon as I have cleaned the boards, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about toric varieties. But maybe a good point to, to pause for any questions or, or comments. Okay, so if I start with a affine toric variety, so that's given by some rational polyhedral cone, and I just describe it as spec of cyclic ring algebra. So the first thing I want to do is is tell you what do we mean? How do we tropicalize that? So. We've got affine toric varieties. So we have u sigma being spec of pan join sigma dual. Before we tropicalize, are going to be hom as k algebras of my coordinate ring sigma dual intersect. M into K. But if you think about what does it do, remember this is some, you know, if you're not a toric person, you should think the usual sigma dual is just the positive orthogonal, and this is just the usual polynomial ring. So what do we do to give such a K algebra homomorphism? Well, I really have to tell you where the monomials go. And so this is really the same as the homo homomorphisms as semigroups. From sigma dual into sec M to now we think about K as a semigroup multiplicative. Okay, so again, the, the usual way, the not the no, no toric way to think about this is K algebra homomorphisms from a polynomial ring to K are the same as semigroup homomorphisms from the natural the N to the N into K viewed multiplicative. So this is now something that we know how to tropicalize. So this was observed independently at the same time by Kajiwara and Payne. But this works well. We'll tropicalize. If I take home of semigroups from sigma dual into sec M, then I can now change this into R bar with Tropical multiplication, otherwise known as addition. So, for example, if my if sigma is the positive orthogonal, so u then sigma dual in sec m will again be n, n squared, and hob of semigroups of that. So this would then be r bar squared. I just tell you where the where the generators go. So I'm getting, which is what I already told you should be the tropicalization of that space. Okay, and then we can glue this as the usual toric varieties. Okay, 
So I want to start with now ready to start talking about vector bundles. And I want to start by saying, what do I, what am I going to mean by a vector bundle on a toric variety? I'm tricking myself. I came from here straight from my lecture on Monday and I should have just walked out of the lecture room with the eraser. <laughs> Every time I'm in Germany, I'm like, you know, guys, technology exists. <laughs> Start a whole war. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, any, we got any questions or comments? What what kind of fields of K do you have in mind? So, what say again? What what the value of fields of K? Your choice. I mean, to draw those pictures. Into to draw those pictures, I need a non-trivial valuation. So, right. if I'm being lazy, I do something like take the Poisson series, or or yeah, rational functions in T, or something. So, but you know anything with it, a, it but that that is only in order to get pictures like like this where I have a some finite things. If I don't care about having bounded pieces, if I'm happy to just have bands, then I could just take your favorite field with the trivial evaluation, and that's already interesting. It, it looks like you want Q to be contained in the image. Do I want sorry? Do I want Q to be so contained in the image? So the the values can't be like the integer. Uh, well, so I, I said, this is why I said for expositional simplicity, okay. I was saying algebraically closed. Okay. And that implies yeah, yeah. E slick Q is in, in the image. I mean, yeah. If, if your field doesn't satisfy that, then you take <laughs> you, you take your favorite non trivially valued algebraically closed field oh, okay. and the outcome won't depend on the choice. Other questions, comments? Complaints about my <laughs> lack of ability to erase the board. <laughs> okay, so let's do back to bundles. And I'm gonna we're gonna start with toric vector bundles. Since we've already talk, started talking about toric varieties. So and as I said, I'm going to give an algebraic approach. So I want to define it as a locally free sheaf. <clears throat> and one reason why we like starting with toric vector bundles is that toric vector bundles are going to be trivial on the toric affine charts. Okay, so that means that if you start, if you think about it naively, I want a, I've got a vector bundle that is trivial on the toric affine charts. So the first hope. I said I want to give it to you as a coherent sheet, so as a module. So the first hope would be as a module, it is, so we say on U sigma, it should be given by mean this is K join U sigma to the R. Okay, so you'd hope that this was that this was what you, you saw on the oh, sorry, I, I don't want a K here, I want tropically. I want R bar. So it is true for a toric vector bundle that on a, on a toric affine chart, it's the sheetification, well, the global sections are going to be a copy of coordinate rings to the R. It would be natural for me to just replace K by R bar, replace the coordinate ring by the tropical. Okay. There's a problem with this though, and Dimitri told us this. So this is the paper that Dimitri also referred to by Jude Mincheva and Tolliver. So they thought through, what if I tell you that my locally free sheaf is you know, it's given locally by things of the form up of this form, or I mean, they worked more generally for semi-ring schemes over F1 varieties, but really the, this is, <laughs> this is a, a fairly big, important special case of this. And what they he showed was that then all vector bundles are direct sums of line bundles. Mm. 
Okay, so that's a bit, that is an issue. We do not want a, well, it would be a very short vector bundle conference if every vector bundle was a direct sum of light bundles. So we would like something that's a little more interesting. And the issue is essentially also something we heard about this morning, which is that, um, maybe, I can't remember what Dimitri called it, but let's call it naive trop DLR is too small. So somehow the story, and this becomes a problem in my setting where the topology is also too coarse. So the story you heard this morning, they managed to get around it by replacing, in, you know, by al allowing more complicated piecewise linear functions. But here, you know, this would be the equivalent of if I only allowed linear functions in, on each cone. And so somehow this tropical GLN, which were these generalized permutation matrices, these, there's not enough. So we, we don't, if you tried to change coordinates using these, you would for, you would basically, the only thing you'd be allowed to do would be maybe shift, add a twist, but nothing else. I guess you can also say that the tropical toric variety is always simply connected. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, right. Okay, so my proposed solution is it's basically to say, okay, so it's a problem that we don't have enough transition maps, but we don't actually need access to all of tropical GLN to describe one vector bundle. Okay? We only need a world where a finite number of, of matrices in GLN actually have meaning. And what we're going to do is it somehow lift to a cover where these are all images of permutation matrices. These are all images in a naive crop GLN. Okay. And the way we'll do this is, is think about or we'll, we'll re-embed you and you can think about this as what we're doing is we're re-embedding the fibers. So one thing that maybe I should I needed to emphasize a lot earlier is that when you're tropicalizing in this sense, the actual choice of embedding matters. You get a different answer if you change your embedding of Y into a torus or embed it into a, a, a bigger torus or so on. So the fiber of, so we want to replace ABBA U sigma by the coordinate ring of a tropical linear space. Okay, and we'll, we'll see what we mean by that at, in a moment. But the idea is that we're going to, yeah, so somehow that will be enough to, to let naive maps give us non-trivial vectors. Mm -hmm. So, for those of us who think about a torus vector bundle, it would be like if you wanted to stick to R to U, that would be kind of like insisting that your Todoroki Java Smith matroid was just one basis. And so your bundle splits. Well, but if your bundle, yeah, if your bundle splits, then it is a direct sum of line bundles and we're okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's think about what do I mean by the five, the fibers should be tropical linear. Well, by replacing this by the coordinate ring of a tropical linear space, this is essentially the same as saying my fibers should be tropical linear spaces. So we want the fiber of our vector bundle. Classically, it should be copy of k to the r. And so if I tropicalize, Well, I could get R bar to the end, 
you so the R, that's one option. And that's the option that if I insisted that that was the only option, I would end up in the doing the Chevatolova problem. But what I have the freedom to do is to think about, or, or I could get the tropicalization of k to the r embedded into some k to the m for m bigger than s. Well, so, sorry, for some big m bigger than r. Okay, so I'm going to embed k to the m literally, so I want a linear embedding here, and get some bigger affine, into some bigger affine space and tropicalize there. And now the idea is going to be that we get more options for the permutations. Somehow the idea, we've seen this already and I forget which talk, but I think it was, it might have been Tuesday, where when we drew the, maybe this was Chris, the idea that when we drew the tropical, this is the tropicalization of a line in P2. And here, you know, when we draw the picture, we, we break symmetry, but really there is a, there's an S3 symmetry here in a way that we didn't see the S3 symmetry on P2. So this is a way that you can get you know, somehow bigger bigger <laughs> groups acting there. Question? Uh, by linear read, you mean topically linear, like a map of story? Yeah, yeah um, it's about, no, 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 I mean using linear equations. Yeah. So as a sub, this should be embedded as a subspace. Yeah, there's no, these are these are K to the R's, not to right. So I want a, a K to, yeah, this should be just a subspace I'll get to the end. Any other questions? Okay. So if I tropicalize this, this is determined by, at least over a trivial valuation. Well, we can say if I put evaluated in, in parentheses, I can do, I can have non-trivial valuations by the evaluated matroid of this embedding. <laughs> So if, if the image is L, of L being the image of phi. And this is just for people who don't know what anything about matroids. This is just the data of which coordinates in L can be zero. Okay, so if you know what a matroid is, then you probably know how if I give you a subspace of affine space, how to associate the matroid to it. If you don't, you can, all you need to remember is it's some, well, it's some combinatorial gadget. Specifically, if I remember, this is the type of data I'm remembering. And the philosophy is somehow that this is the right notion in tropical geometry to remember linear space. Okay. Geometrically, what am I doing? This is coming from... <laughs> a presentation of my vector bundle. I've learned that when I'm talking about toric, for some reason on my scratch paper, my, my vector bundles are always script E, but I've learned that on boards, my script E and my sigmas look identical. So I'll try and make, my vector bundles will try to be F. So the idea is somehow, if I have a presentation of my vector bundle, then, this is going to be the same as thinking about the fibers and an inclusion of the fibers. Yeah. And so, and what you should think about is I said at the start that I think about embedded toric variety, embedded tropical geometry as shoot the art of choosing a good embedding of my variety into a toric variety. From the vector bundle point of view, particularly where we want to tropicalize, the art is going to be choosing a good presentation. Some presentations are going to remember more information about the, the vector bundle than others. Okay, so maybe we'll say, so this choice, oops, of presentation in, in plays for a vector bundle, this is going to be the same, well, plays the same role roughly as the choice of y into x sigma for varieties. So we know in, in tropical geometry that if you choose different choices of embeddings, you might remember different information. And we're going to, and one of the messages of this talk is if we choose different presentations, we might remember the, different information about my vector bundle as I tropicalize. Mm -hmm. 
Of course, I still have not yet told you how I'm propagating, but I promise this is coming. Okay, let's try and start talking. What's talking about? Sorry, uh, when you have a uh, staff monitoring virus, you have several tasks. Mm -hmm. Do you want uh, all the tra graphical linear space to be the same or where? Um, no, I, I, let's see, what do I want to say about that? Now? I'm going to give it to, well, no, well, but they will be related. Sense, yeah. Well, get, why don't you hold on to that question for a moment? Because I, I'm, I'm actually going to give you the answer globally, or Chris is going to tell you. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. Um, uh, varieties. Yeah. Okay. So let's think about just in terms of fibers. So like if the base, so my first two examples will be just if the base is a point. So I have a very boring toric variety that I want to talk about in tropical uh, vector bundle on, right? If you have a point, you don't have a lot of choice about your vector bundle, your fiber, you've got your fiber K to the R. But I'm telling you that actually I'm going to be a bit fancy and think about different embedding, think of my K to the R embedded in different ways. Then, so my fibers, the tropicalization will be different tropical linear spaces, but algebraically, the module should be R bar to the M or to the R mod. Again, we have to have some bed relations of some linear equations. Okay, and the choices here should be circuits of metrics. If you're not a matroid person, then what you think is, well, I look at the equations that define this embedding of k to the r into k to the m, and I know how to tropicalize those equations. That gives me some linear equations, and then I, I apply this congruence recipe to, to get a to tell me how to take the quotient. That should be r to the m. So the idea is that the quotient should be something that is my r dimensional space. Okay. If the base is a is p to the n, well, so this is sort of a very local thing. With the base is p to the n, I mean, how do I give you a vector bundle mm -hmm. on p to the n? If I'm from this perspective, I have to give you a graded module over the polynomial ring that is locally free. Okay, so I'm going to give you again. What what should the answer be? I have to give you a module, what well, semi module. It should, it should all be semi-modules, but I'll probably forget to write that from now on. The semi-module of the direct sum of R bar to the oh. X naught up to XM um, shifted by some degrees, and then again, the bend of some linear equations. <clears throat> okay, and this time, the coefficients will be here. I had just circuits of some matroid or linear equations tropically. Here, I'll get the same sort of things, but I'll have to add some coefficients for my polynomial ring in order to make that more sense. So, so we have to homogenize with monomial coefficients. And this is in order to make this actually greater. So what you're yeah. So over a point, you get one vector bundle or many? Over a point, do I get one vector bundle? I'm going to, yeah, I will see these so that we, I will get many different descriptions. Yeah, so the common, it's sort of a combinatorial framing. So what I'm, because what I'm tropicalizing is not the vector bundle, I'm going to tropicalize the presentation. So over a point, you, you again get many different presentations of your vector bundle. Other questions? So this again, so this is you think of as just a presentation of a vector space. There's many different presentations of the same vector space. This, you, you're thinking, I'm giving you a, a projector, a sheaf on, a, on PN, so I'm giving you a graded module. And it should be locally free, and the locally free because of some technical conditions to make it be, come from homogenized circuits of a matrix. So now we just want to generalize this to arbitrary toric varieties. 
And we've seen in, well, in my latest talk at least, that the important thing there is to think about the Cox ring. So we're going to replace here, I gave you a description for projective space where we know the homogeneous, you know, the homogeneous coordinate ring is just the polynomial ring. We generalize this to the Cox ring of a toric variety. So we'll write S to be the Cox ring of tropic sigma. So that's going to be just a polynomial ring with one variable for each ray of my toric variety. And then we'll have a tropical toric vector bundle. is given by the, the semi-module over the Cox ring, the direct sum of S, it should be shifted by some DIs. So these would be in Z to the N now, if it's an N-dimensional toric variety. And we could have linear equations with monomial coefficients. And then these should be the actually I have space. These are going to come from circuits of evaluated matroid. If you don't know, if you've never seen the word evaluated matroid, ignore the word evaluated for now. What you should remember is somehow matroids are the combinatorial abstraction of linear spaces or embeddings of linear spaces. And we're going to just remember that data, but there's more than there's more than just linear spaces that satisfy the same axiom. So it's this generalization, which well, we will probably all seen be much more than you used the last few years. So we have here a something a quotient. This is a module over S or a semi module over S, and you know classically, if I have a toric variety, I want to give a sheaf. A coherent sheaf of my toric variety, I give you a module over the Cox ring. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying here is a semi-module over the tropical Cox ring. I have to have some shifts. I'm sub I am suppressing some details here about the relationship between the D, these, these shifts and degrees, and the particular choice of matroid I've chosen. But, but this is the idea that we're going to start with. So I will say that Say a few words about that once they have some more clean board space and, and tell you what, what we know about those, the setting. So I guess the answer to Connor's question was, is my, I'm giving you the global description by this, I mean, and this is essentially your L, your, do you call it L? You call it L, right? Yeah, this is your L. So. And so this means on different charts, I'm going to get slightly different. This It's kind of like there's one, there's what we're going to see. I think, I think in some sense it makes more sense not to think about different tropical linear spaces on different affine charts, but to think that we have a, a tropical linear space on the torus. Mm -hmm. And then as we go to the toric boundary, we're getting different tropical, we're getting the generations of these. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the first observation for those who are paying detailed attention to, to Chris's talk, my shifts di uh, correspond to the diagram from Chris's talk. I always forget rows versus columns, but in principle, 
oh, Chris gave us some ooh, n n by number of rays matrix, and these should be these should be apparently columns of of that matrix. And when the pair So the matroid the di is I'll put realizable because I won't quite define that for you, but so I'll put it in quotes. It's then this is the then this is the tropicalization. of the top the Cox module of a toric vector bundle. Okay, so the idea here is I start with a toric vector bundle. This is a this is a a vector bundle on a toric variety. So it's given by a locally free sheaf on my toric variety. Cox tells us locally free sheaf comparisons of my toric variety are given by modules over the Cox ring. And this is, you know, if you replace S by the normal polynomial, the normal Cox ring, this is this logic. So the idea is that we've just tropicalized this presentation. And of course, if I give you a module, there is many possible presentations in the same way that if I give you a vector space, yes, I could describe it as the co-kernel of many different sequences. And so, mm, this presentation is not unique, but if, when I tropicalize it, this does work in a function. So in some sense, you could say, I could say this is the tropicalization of the, of the Cox module. Maybe I should say it's a tropicalization of the Cox module, because really, again, we're tropicalizing the presentation. And so it's, I said B, it should be, or maybe I should say a tropicalization here. We're, we're tropicalizing the presentation of my vector bundle, writing it as a quotient of a direct sum of light bundles. Yeah. Yep. You might have said this, but I'm just trying to make sure. So given a vector bundle, you're going to get a quotient of sum of line bundles by more sum of line bundles, and you remember the map between the sum of line bundles? Um, so it's more, right, so, yeah. I, I mean, all I'm doing at the moment is saying I've got my DI. I'm only worried about this half for now. So, I mean, yeah, you could say choosing a Choosing a, you know, directly choosing an alpha, a full yeah. Pre yeah, I've been saying presentation, but I should really say, you know, generating set or something. If I, if I did this, this would be like choosing precisely what this would be choosing particular choices here for my learning. Mm -hmm. But I don't really need to do that. But that's just to make life simple. So it's, re it's really choosing a, you know, if you call it I'm choosing a generating set. So I don't really need this piece. I'm, I'm particularly interested in this piece. Was that your question? So, do you remember so now the, the the kernel of the map? Well, the kernel of the map. I mean, well, if I give you a surjection, I've remember, I I have remembered the kernel, right? And you, but maybe you're saying tropically tropically. How do I remember it? Yes. It this is this is these linear equations. So it's it's what I'm quoting by here. And knowing this, I kind of do know the presentation. But yes, I think things are are rigid enough. Yeah. Any other questions? So I want to tell you what we know about this. So the first, I didn't give you the precise details, the conditions of, of how D has to relate to, to this, but actually secretly crusted on Tuesday. So, but with this, we could say there are non-realizable or tropical correct vector bundles. And this is often, I mean, this is more inside tropical geometry. I view this as a reality check that the theory has a chance of being useful. There's this general problem in tropical geometry that if I asked, if I said to myself, I want to understand the tropicalization of varieties, that is an impossible problem and impossible in a sort of almost provable way because part of it, it would involve classifying which matroids are representable. There are papers with there's a paper with the title "The Missing Axiom of, of Matroid Theory is Missing Forever." So this is somehow that's totally a totally unreasonable question. So if you're going to get a theory that is workable, you have 
inside tropical geometry, you can't demand to only work with things that are tropicalizations. You have to be able to relax your conditions enough. And so you need a way to do that. And often it's this way of, so the fact that we have non-realizable ones gives us a hint that maybe we are, you know, we're not doomed to be only studying something that's going to be impossible to study. However, it does make life a little harder, but it also forces that. So next thing is we have a definition of H naught of F with H naught of trop. If I have a, a toric vector bundle G that I'm tropicalizing in this way, the global sections are going to be the same. So if I start with a, a toric vector bundle, I choose a presentation for its COPS module, I tropicalize, I now apply the procedure that we have to compute global sections of these tropical vector bundles, I get the same answer as I would there. However, we have to say if the presentation of G is chosen well. Is this a toric or IFT or more general? So if this is this is at moment this at the moment is for, for so far I've only told you about vector bundles of toric varieties. Okay. Is that, yeah. but you, so you should compare this with so and this is based on work this work of Duraco Jabish Smith. We're about parliaments of polytopes on toric vector bundles. You should compare this though with some of the other situations we have in tropical geometry. Well, for example, I mean, the most notable thing is if we're, if we're trying to think about line bundles, in, in, so in, in, the, in the metric graph sense, we have this problem that when you have a curve and you turn that into, you have an actual curve and a line bundle and you turn that into a tropical line bundle on a metric graph, we only have upper semi continuity. We know that the trade that, that this will be a greater than or equal to, but we can, there are examples where we can't guarantee, this, no matter how well, we, how careful we are. And so this is somehow saying in this world, life is a lot of the future from this perspective. The next piece is what I <laughs> somehow. Is not all your characteristics. Yeah. So, so the next thing I'm going to write down is we have chair classes. So yeah. Tropical vector bundles have chair classes. For the toric vector bundle experts, this is a slight cheat because we just pull the, the formula across from the from the associated toric vector bundle. But this lets us define some things. So now we have, so I said at the start that one reason you might care about tropical geometry, even if you're only caring about the original algebraic geometry perspective, is it can illuminate which pieces, you know, which pieces of the problem are truly combinatorial or, or, where, or where the combinatorial obstruction really lives. And this is something, well, that, that I've learned. So the and the first the first one that some of you will already you know possibly we well, but we're going to say what's an extra what are called modularity conditions. For the, for the points that are about to go. So this is modularity in the sense of modular lattices. So we have a matroid, yeah. Where in what theory do these term classes live? They're going to live in the um so they should in the chow ring of the base. So the tropical toric variety we can just describe say the you know the chow ring of a toric variety is purely combinatorial, let's say smooth. And these are going to live there. So you're not using any like the tropical intersection theory that's no, yeah. Well, I mean you could say that, well, I mean, you could say secretly yes, because tropical, I mean, there are many of us who think that most tropical intersection theory is really toric intersection theory. And so from that perspective, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, ha you have a choice about whether you want to start talking about, or, you know, the custody weights or whether you just want to talk about classes of the toric variety. So, yeah. 
This is a this is one of these yeah, many different. <laughs> so the first one is that all topical. This is with these extra modularity conditions, all topical vector bundles on P one split as a direct sum of line bundles. But we actually need these extra conditions. So if I just take the first condition, like I, I mean, if I just write down this module with linear space, the DIs, add the, the first constraints that I said about, that I didn't tell you about, the DI, their compatibility, you can construct tropical vector bundles that don't, on P1 that don't split. So the extra conditions come in if we, if we look at the lattice of flats of the associated matroid and put some conditions on. Turns out these are always satisfied for the types of matroids that show up in correct vector bundles, but it's, they're not true in general. So um, that was the first thing. And if you think, so some of you will know this much better than, than I do, right? Because if anyone who calls this the Birkhoff Grotendieck theorem classically is going back to, you know, you, what did Birkhoff prove? Birkhoff proved some statement about what things in modular lattices. And it's exactly those kind of concepts. That you need here. So it's saying that the lattice of subspace, you need for the classical fact, you need that the, the lattice of subspaces of a vector space is a modular lattice. And if you don't know what modular lattice is, it's the it's the thing that generalizes the the fact from linear algebra that the dimension of a if you have v and w, the dimension of the sum plus the dimension of the intersection is the sum of the two dimensions. So that's when you abstract this to, to ranks of matroids, this is this is not always true. Okay. We have a notion of stability. You for tropical vector bundles. Okay, so this work uses the work of our session share so 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 if you look at Lucy Devi's thesis builds on this so well so develops the stuff that we build on and this has the property that um with again we can say prop f is going to be stable sorry I'm editing stable if and only if Maybe I need to write this up here. We have trop F stable if and only if F is again if the presentation is chosen well. With respect to some polarization or all? Any pol yeah, any polarization. I mean, that doesn't yeah, you, 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 are you asking the quantifiers for choosing? Yeah. Um, I think all. I, I think I think you can choose a presentation that works for all polarizations. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm like, be careful what I think of my feet, but I think I think that's okay. Yeah. So again, this is a thing where you have to be careful about your. So for toric vector bundle people, this is a choice of matroid for your toric vector bundle. You have to be a little careful. Basically, you have to assume you need enough, <coughs> enough intersections of subspaces to be to be action flats for matroid. Okay. And then there was a and this leads to a notion of other Narasiman filtrations. <clears throat> Misspell if I'm not careful. Nara. Seaman and well, and Jordan Holder for traditions. But the one thing that is a little complicated in this world is that we don't yet have a uniqueness notion. So this is prop. There's probably some further combinatorial conditions like modularity conditions that will guarantee uniqueness. But it doesn't follow straight from the Metroid language. What do you mean by uniqueness? Well, so normally um, these had and receiving filtrations are oh. unique. And at the moment we can construct them. We know they exist, but but I can't tell you that they're unique. It's sort of a standard tropical problem in this world that you, know, you, you don't know how to do intersections. 
it's lower. Okay, so I wanted to, well, maybe I should, okay. So the last thing I was going to say is, so I've, I've spent, well, it turns out I've spent all of my time talking about well, tropical vector bundles. What would happen if I wanted to talk about more general vector bundles? Chances are, you know, many of you care about things, you're not, most of you do not love toric varieties as much as I do. So the, what would I do? I would do what I did at the very start. I'm going to start with my variety, choose a good embedding of it into a toric variety, and restrict from a toric from one of these toric vector bundles to the variety. And then these are the ones that I want to I then I then want to think about as vector bundles in general. And this motivates the question I, I started with. So maybe just fill it in the bottom here. So, so for general y. For the general y, I'm going to write embed y into a toric variety and then and restrict to f on f on trop toric variety, and then I'm going to restrict it to trop y. So a vector bundle on my tropical variety of the tropicalization, or more generally on a trop subscheme of a tropical toric variety it should be the restriction of a vector bundle on a, to a toric vector bundle on my toric variety and so that motivates for me the question I started with which is what vector bundles do I get this way if you if I start with a vector bundle I care about on y can I always choose an embedding and it might be a crazily large embedding it could be as as crazy as you like and a vector bundle on the toric variety so that my vector bundle is the restriction. And, and that would be, uh, sorry, you said that. Okay, so what, what's an example? So, but, so what's the obstruction? Because this is so on your toric variety. Right. So you take any vector bundle on your and why? Which sometimes you are not in your top end generated by the one yeah. of them. Okay. And the yeah. other choice is the okay. Right. okay. right. So the question so then becomes uh, right. But then, so then the question becomes, what do I get this way, right? And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this is why we come. Yeah. Okay. okay, but maybe that's a good place to stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>